What made the Chevrolet Impala? A great car, but Oldsmobile so unsuccessful. Back when the Beatles were still cranking out hits and the space race was hot, there emerged two paths in the American automotive forest, the Chevy Impala and Oldsmobile. Both paths wound through the American heartland. Both offered a means to cruise the burgeoning highways, but they led to very different destinations in public acclaim. Let's talk about the Chevy Impala first. Chevrolet Impala. The Impala has, over the years, become something of an American icon. Introduced in 1958, it rolled onto the scene with style, size, and most crucially, versatility. It catered to a wide demographic, from the family looking for reliable transportation to the enthusiast craving power and sleek lines. When the Impala hit its stride, Chevrolet didn't rest on their hubcaps. They were always innovating. Take the 1965 Impala, for example, that not only offered improvements over the previous model, but also set a sales record with more than a million sold. It had the looks, the juice under the hood, and the appeal of accessibility. Plus, it became part of pop culture. From rap videos to movies, the Impala had a street cred that Oldsmobile could only dream about. Now, don't get me wrong, Oldsmobile had its moments. It was General Motors' oldest surviving brand, after all. And back in the 1940s and 50s, Oldsmobile was ahead of the curve, dropping innovations like the first automatic transmission in a mass-produced car. But it's not about how you start the race, it's where you finish, right? Oldsmobile. As the years went on, Oldsmobile seemed to struggle with its identity. Was it a luxury brand? Was it performance-oriented? Instead of carving out a clear niche, it sort of floated in limbo, which, let me tell you, is never where you want to be in the car business, or any business for that matter. When the 70s rolled around, Beset by the fuel crisis and changing consumer tastes, Oldsmobile didn't manage to adapt as well as its Chevy cousin. The brand that introduced the Rocket 88, which was the grandfather to muscle cars, somehow got lost in its own legacy. And let's not ignore the marketing boondoggle, the infamous Chevy engine in Olds clothing in the late 70s. People want authenticity, and that was a crack in the trust dam that eventually led to a flood of disappointment. Final Thoughts so, what made the Chevy Impala great wasn't just its design, its range of engine options, or its comfortable interior. It was Chevy's ability to adapt, to meet the American driver's needs, whatever they might be, while keeping that bowtie swag in full effect. As I cruise through Portland, I see the late model Impalas, sleek and teched out, buzzing by, and it's a reminder that an old dog can learn new tricks, can evolve with the times. Meanwhile, the Oldsmobile has become a relic of a bygone era, a specter in the rearview mirror of the automotive world. It's a tale of adaptation, of survival of the fittest, and a brand story with clear lessons in branding, market adaptation, and, ironically, the dangers of nostalgia on the road to progress.